Greetings, ladies and mendigents, and welcome to this narration of the web novel Burning Stars, Falling Skies, taken from both HFY and Royal Road. The link to the original will be down below, and as always, I hope that you enjoy. And if you do, please subscribe, like, and comment so that the great algorithm in all its wisdom decides to help grow this channel. Chapter 1 The Descent of Angels Dak was trudging through the desert when an angel fell from the sky. She raised her upper torso from the fine grey sand, resting her weight on her four balkier walking legs. She wrung her grasping legs together as she watched the streak of light falling from between the moons. It was a portent of what Three Dark couldn't tell, but the star swirled and moved about a spot which the angel had fallen. Maybe the heavens themselves were angry that an angel dared to flee their lonesome depths. Maybe the other stars grew jealous of the angel's beauty and pushed it from their twinkling embrace. Regardless of the cause, the angel traced a slow and purposeful arc of white light through the night sky as it fell from the heavens. Even as she couldn't understand the purpose or design behind the celestial entity falling to earth, it seemed appropriate to Threedak that she appreciate and mourn its passing. She let out a low, keening croak, her neck pouches expanding as she forced air through them. The angel grew brighter in the night sky as its descent brought her closer to her. Threedak croaked again, pouring her emotion into the deep, thrumming notes as she swished her thick-scaled tail back and forth. The tribe had priests that could make better sense of the heavens falling, the genetic memories of her purer, closer to the source of the Dutch doll people. Threedak was simply a gatherer and a scavenger, providing what she could to the tribe. She would learn what she could of the angels passing and then reported back for the more learned minds. Hopefully, they wouldn't need to consume her for her memories, although passing your memories to a descendant provided immortality of sorts. Threedak couldn't help but selfishly wish that her day of consumption was far in the distant future. Even now, she could remember the consumption of each of her ancestors, stalwart Dutch Tal that through injury, illness, or times of famine submitted themselves to the tribe. It was a strange thing, remembering both being eaten as well as consuming as still living being. To know both the pain of another's jaws closing around your leg while simultaneously tasting the warmth of their flesh. Every ancestor was unbroken link stretching back for hundreds of cycles. The echoes of their thoughts, images and memories passing from descendant to descendant. When her time came, Threedak would submit herself to the tribe as well. Her memories and skills would become a part of the tribe. Most likely, the other scavengers would consume her rather than the tribe as a whole so that she could pass on to them her specific skills. She wasn't the most important Dutch doll, but there was much her tribeswoman could learn from her about hiding and tracking the meager game across the shifting sands of the great desert. Unlike many, the concept of being eaten didn't excite Threedak. She wasn't opposed to it when the time came, but she would happily leave that honor to her fellow huntswoman if at all possible. Many wanted to be consumed as soon as possible to ensure the smooth transition of their memories into the gestalt of the tribe, but Threedak was willing to take risks. True, she might die away from the tribe, her and her ancestors' memories lost for eternity. Still, she wanted to live her life for a purpose rather than simply waiting for an honorable death and consumption. The angel fell closer, the night air itself bellowing in approval as its light began to illuminate the desert like a second sun. Three decks stood up with a full nine meshes of height, supported awkwardly by only her hind legs and tail. She bellowed in reply, celebrating the angel's mournful descent. Then the angel slammed into the desert. Its white light flashed in a strobe through the empty night. 
A second later, an explosion of sound like a million thunderbolts striking at the same time washed over her. Three Dax neck pouches vibrated as her entire body shook from the rumble of the angel. She quivered in fear and prostrated herself. Clearly, she had offended the angel by only standing on her hindmost limbs. Three Dak croaked in a prayer, begging for the light's forgiveness and confessing her transgressions. A wall of sound rushed towards her as she closed her membranes covering her eyes and accelerated her request for clemency. The wall of sand picked Three Dak up and threw her. She didn't know for how far she traveled through the night, but the sand surrounded her, biting into her skin and sneaking beneath her scales. She slammed into the dune of grey sand, her air leaving her lungs in a sudden rush. All around her, the rumble continued as the angel expressed its displeasure with her arrogance, the very dunes beneath her feet shaking with its rage. Like the sand squall, the clouds of dust and angelic anger passed just as fast as it arrived. Three Dak rolled her body to the side, struggling against the sand to work her way to her feet. She crouched beneath the dune on all six of her legs, using both her graspers and walkers to scurry away from a landing spot lest a predator arrive. After ten minutes passed without a trumpet of the Starbuck and the beating wings of the kitchen, Three Dak let herself relax. The angel must have forgiven her impropriety. She lifted her torso from the gritty sand and wrung her graspers together as she looked in the direction of where the angel had fallen. Curiosity bubbled up inside of her. One of her ancestors encountered a fallen angel, a dead thing of rock laying in a sea of black glass, hissing and cracking as it cooled in the light of the twin moons. Her tribe took the glass as a gift from the celestial beings and used it to tip their javelins and spears for a generation. Excitedly, Three Dag dropped her torso to the sand and began hurrying towards where the angel fell as fast as her six legs could carry her. The dunes flew by in the chill of night air as they periodically flicked out her tongue to taste the wind. No predators surrounded her, the angel's anger having driven them away. Three Dak increased her speed, excited at the possibility of being the first to witness the angel's terrible fall and grace. Then she was upon it, a twisted tube of gleaming metal with wings and a tail of a kitchen flowing faintly with heat. Even from a five hundred feet away, she could feel the warmth of the dead angel on her face, the taste of charred meat on her tongue. Hesitantly... She approached and circled around the fallen being. The angel had a hole in its neck, dim celestial light spilling out from its interior. Almost as an afterthought, Three Dak looked down and saw the corpse of a being, a trail of disturbed sand leading from the angel's entry to its collapsed form. She scuttled forward and flicked her tongue, tasting the air around the body. It smelled edible, even if its strange body, pink and scaleless, with only two walking legs, looked strange beyond belief. At least it only had a single pair of graspers, standard and covered in five digits rather than a traditional four. She pushed the body with her muzzle and received no response. Convinced that the pig was dead, and recently so, Three Dak opened a fang ball to devour it. Despite her own mixed feelings on being consumed for the good of the tribe, the thought of dying alone and unable to pass on her memories did scare her. The least she could do for this poor creature was give it the honor of subsisting for eternity in her and her descendants' memories. The crunchy flesh parted under her razor teeth. Whatever it was, the strange being wouldn't have survived more than a single night in the desert. Its sweet flesh flowed down her throat like a honey as she consumed it. Its memories flowed into her, a vague at first, but with increasing clarity. She remembered sitting at a table, grasping a piece of metal. A cup, yes, a cup in her graspers. Hands, that was the word, using her hands to move the cup to her fat pink face and drinking a harsh burning liquid from it.
Around her, other pink and brown beings laughed and joked in their high-pitched tones. Threedak blinked. She was in a new spot, pilot school. She rolled the words around on her tongue. She walked into the grey pot, one of many in a row. Other pink and brown beings took their own pods in turn. Inside, she sat down in a strange shallow chair and reached out to grab the two sticks covered in buttons and knobs with the being's hands. In front of her, the heavens appeared. Instinctively, she jerked the sticks to the side, causing the points of light to move. The green block appeared in the sky in front of her. Tiny numbers and letters gave her information for which she had no context. She possessed 350 millimeter shells, six rockets, and 2,000 liters of reaction mass. The memories told Tridak that the shells weren't the sort worn by the mountain frack, but instead some sort of weapon. On the same note, she knew that a liter was a measurement of liquid. An angel appeared in front of her in the night sky, and she knew that it would be an enemy. A harsh pyramid of silver, a tail of flame trailed after it as it flew past. The pyramid spit balls of metal at her that the computer highlighted in red. Computer? She thought in confusion, her brain unable to find any context for the concept as her hands moved on their own, rotating the night sky in a way that prevented the balls of bread from striking her, a force pressed against her chest. Then the pod shook around her. She was pushing one of the buttons on the stick and the green numbers began to tick down. 300 shells became 200 and 75 and then the pyramid exploded. The images came faster, whirling around as three da kept chewing on the body. Gradually, the images gained solidity and the words gained context. The being that she had eaten was named Ashley Kunach. A prideful and talented pilot, she had defended her tribe to the last, but a time had come at the hands of the implicatable foe that her race simply knew as the invaders. Tears sparkled, unshed in three Dak's eyes as she saw the splendor of Ashley's race, humanity in all its glory. Two dozen worlds covered in glittering metal and farms, a people that did not succumb to disease or hunger, but instead pursued art and exploration, littering the night sky with stations and habitats. Long before Ashley was born, humanity discovered the wormholes as well as the technology to stabilize them. They spread from one world to another in a golden age, their numbers multiplying without an upper limit until they met the invaders. The invaders never even spoke their name as they began eliminating human outposts one by one. They didn't even attack for the purpose of securing territory or food. The outposts they seized lay empty, the corpses of the defenders uneaten and wasted in the streets. A grand fleet was sent to fight them, but it was defeated in glorious battle. That defeat destroyed almost as many of the invader ships as it did the human vessels, and slowed the invaders' advance for a time. Then more came. Humanity sent a second fleet. Older vessels, many hastily repaired and activated, rushed into battle, the invaders, crewed by officers fresh from school. This time, the defeat was not glorious. The human forces were crushed, and the invader ships continued unabated. Humanity had nothing left to stop them. In desperation, a pair of cruisers were sent from the final stronghold, a planet called Earth. They went through a barely modulated wormhole, allowing themselves to be cast through the storm of the universe's primordial forces in an attempt to escape to a place where the invaders could not follow. Only one human ship survived the transition, the Ark limped towards a world surrounded by two moons that Threedak recognized as her own. Then the invaders transitioned out of the moor of the wormhole, many of their ships mangled and leaking air or radiation from the storms of energy the wormhole flung them through. Not content with defeating humanity, the invaders had risked thousands of their own just to eliminate the race entirely. 
The captain of the ship dispatched Ashley, piloting a shuttle of humanity's best and brightest to Threedak's world. After all, that was the Ark's true purpose. Not to fight the invaders, but to ensure that humanity survived, and their culture and technology lived on in the isolated corner of the galaxy. The invaders shot it down regardless. Ashley did her best to land the shuttle, and her efforts prevented the vessel from crashing into the world at speeds that would have likely ensured a winter that would last generations. But it was not enough to save her own life or the lives of the scientists in the shuttle's hold. Threedak stood on her hindmost legs, balancing precariously with the help of her tail, and let out a low, drumming moan. Tears of precious liquid flowed down her scaly face as she sang the song of lament to the uncaring desert winds. The long moan disappeared into the emptiness of the night, unanswered. Ashley Kunach had been humanity's last guardian, and the content of the shuttle had been humanity's last hope. Now they both were gone forever at the hands of the invaders, and the galaxy was poor a place for it. End of chapter and that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. If you enjoyed the story, please follow the link down below and let the author know. If you wish to support this channel, you can do all the usual YouTube gumph, like subscribing, following, and more importantly, sharing. All of these things do help the channel grow. If you wish to do more, there are links for donations, Patreon, and channel memberships as well. And until the next time, I hope that you all have a wonderful one. I will see you in the next video. Cheers.